Being stranded at an airport with a much delayed or canceled flight is unacceptable when the airline's to blame. That's according to U.S. President Joe Biden, who on Monday said his administration is writing new rules aimed at requiring airlines to compensate passengers for significant flight delays or cancellations when the carriers are responsible. First, we just launched a new website, flightsright.gov. It features a dashboard we created last fall to give travelers more transparency into airlines' compensation policies. Later this year, my administration will propose a historic new rule that will make it mandatory, not voluntary, but mandatory, for all U.S. airlines to compensate you with meals, hotels, taxis, ride shares, or re and rebooking fees, and cash, miles, and or travel vouchers whenever they're the ones to blame for the cancellation or delay. And that's all on top of refunding the cost of your ticket. But a delay or cancellation due to weather is not considered an airline's fault. So if your jet is grounded in a snowstorm, this rule would not apply. And it remains unclear when the rule will be finalized. A July 2021 proposal to require airlines to refund consumer fees for baggage that is delayed is still not finalized. And some carriers privately question whether the Transportation Department has the legal authority to mandate compensation for delays. Last August, most U.S. carriers voluntarily committed to provide hotels or meals, but resisted providing cash compensation for delays. American air travelers deserve better. The Biden administration has sparred with U.S. airlines over who was to blame for hundreds of thousands of flight disruptions last year, some of which were due to a shortage of airline staff. The trade association Airlines for America has pushed back, saying U.S. airlines, quote, have no incentive to delay or cancel a flight and do everything in their control to ensure flights depart and arrive on time. But safety is always the top priority. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colonist.